If you ever used the Java Time API in your app, you may have ended up with lots of crashes and complaints from users with devices running below API level 26. The reason is that the devices which encountered the issue simply didn't ship with the necessary classes, as at the time those classes were not part of the Android. I'm Murat Yener, a developer advocate for Android, and I'll be talking about Java language updates on Android. With each new release of Android, additional Java APIs are added from OpenJDK to Android. In Android 11, we added support for a number of APIs from newer OpenJDK releases all the way up to the version 13, including additions to List, Set, Map, and the new Java Time API. While we continue to add new Java APIs to each platform release, we also want to make sure these APIs are available for older devices. What if I told you that when you use Android Gradle plugin 4.0 or newer, you can now use several hundred APIs from newer OpenJDK versions and your app will work on any Android device? Some of these newer Java APIs in Android 11 are supported through backporting, while other APIs are also available via desugaring on older devices where the Android platform does not have the APIs on the runtime. If you are wondering how that's even possible, let's take a look at desugaring. The Android Gradle plugin 4.0 provides built-in support for using certain Java language APIs and third parties that use them. Previously, these APIs were only supported on newer Android versions, but with AGP 4.0, they are now supported on nearly all Android versions. This support is possible with a trick called desugaring, which is performed by D8 and R8. When you build an app using these new Java APIs, the Java compiler first converts Java source code into Java bytecode. Then the toolchain implements new APIs by performing bytecode transformations on your app, including any third-party libraries your app uses, and converts them into DEX code. Finally, the necessary newer Java runtime is added as a separate DEX library for devices that are missing those runtime classes. This process is called desugaring, and it enables a set of Java APIs to work on all existing devices except Parallel, which is supported from API level 21. To start using the newer Java APIs, update the Android Gradle plugin to 4.0 or higher, and in your module's build Gradle file, set core library desugaring enabled flag, set Java source code target compatibility to Java 8, add core library desugaring as a dependency, and enable multidex since to support these newer APIs, the plugin compiles a separate dex file that contains an implementation of the missing APIs and includes it in your app. Now that you learned about and enabled desugaring, Let's take a look at the new APIs. The old Java Util Time API had some drawbacks. Java Util Date and Java Util Calendar classes are mutable, which can cause concurrency issues. Also, the API is not very consistent and easy to use. To give a simple example, in a date object, day starts from one, but month starts from zero, which can be confusing. With OpenJDK version 8, a new Java Time API, Java Time Package, is added to Java. The new Java Time is based on the popular library Jota Time. All core Java Time classes are immutable and don't have setter methods, so they don't introduce any concurrency issues. Plus, the new Java Time API makes working with time zones much easier. Let's take a look at the new date and time classes. First, if you don't need time zone data on date and time objects, Java Time has two new classes, local date and local time. These two classes represent date and time relative to the user, such as an alarm clock or a timer, without worrying about time zones. If your use case requires time zones, you can use zone date time or offset date time classes. Let's start with zone date time. Zone date time is an immutable representation of date time that holds a local date time, a zone ID, and the result zone offset. 
Time zones can be set either abbreviated or long text form of the zone using zone ID class. Zone date time is particularly useful when you need to store date and time without relying on the context of a specific device or an app. Zone date time can be resolved to any time zone at any point in time. Offset date time is similar to zone date time, but keeps the offset from Greenwich UTC instead of zone ID. You can use zone offsets to calculate the differences between the current time zone and Greenwich UTC. To summarize the differences between these two date time classes, zone date time is great for displaying time zone sensitive data in your app. Offset date time is best for storing date time to a database or other use cases where the data needs to be serialized. The new Java Time API has two new classes, period and duration, to define a date range or length of time respectively. Next, we have streams. Streams allow you to perform functional style operations on collections. Streams do not store or modify the underlying data structure and offer much better readability. Streams have a large number of built-in intermediate and terminal operations. Intermediate operations are lazy and always return a new stream. Terminal operations are eager and once invoked, they complete the traversal of the data source and the stream can no longer be used. Since intermediate operations are not evaluated until terminal operation is invoked, Streams may perform better when working on large data sources. To use streams, you can call the stream method on a collection or use stream of and pass your data source or use the stream builder. There are new additions to map, collection, and comparator interfaces under Java Util package. Writing a comparator is not hard, but requires a lot of boilerplate code where you can easily make mistakes. In Java 8, you can use a simple chaining style code to write comparators. With the help of method handles and lambdas, a comparator in Java 8 looks as simple as this. Another interesting addition to the Java Util package is the optional class and its primitive counterparts optional int, optional long, and optional double. Optional helps you work with real types instead of null references. Optional can represent null with the absence of the value. You can use the utility methods to handle values as available or not available instead of checking null values. The optional class has a variety of utility methods such as or else, or else throw, filter, and more which help you handle null checks and null cases easily. There are also new methods on atomic integer, atomic long, and atomic reference in the Java Util concurrent atomic package. Another update in Java Util concurrent packages bug fixes to the concurrent hash map, a thread safe alternative to hash map. Concurrent hash map has always been part of Android. However, on API levels 21 and 22, the implementation had a bug. A new fixed implementation is part of the desugared library. With library desugaring, that implementation will be used in your app in place of the one in the platform which might have a bug. If you are not familiar with concurrent hash map, this class allows any number of threads to perform get operations. For update and insert operations, the performing thread must lock the particular segment where the data is modified or inserted. Although any thread can perform get operations, this lock may block get operations that try to access the data in the locked segment. Due to synchronization, concurrent hash map can perform slower than a hash map, in return providing thread safety. Upgrade your projects to make full use of all newer Java language APIs. Streams, optionals, and the new time APIs help you write less code and introduce fewer errors while using modern language APIs. Make sure to take a look at the full list of supported newer Java APIs, which is linked in the notes below. Thanks for watching. Go write beautiful Android apps by using the newer Java APIs, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>